Hey, what's up, good people? I'm QC. Welcome to this special edition of Talking and Grubbing. Back in June, I had compiled a list called the Top 10 Unsung NBA Champions to coincide with last year's NBA Finals. Now, I had covered six teams. I didn't finish with the top three because I got so busy live streaming during the Finals, doing other videos, and just life in general. So I decided to name my top three teams just in time for this year's NBA regular season kickoff. I'll continue with my top 10 unsung NBA champions. At number three, I have the 1999 San Antonio Spurs. Heading into the 1996-97 NBA season, the Spurs were trying to ascend from a playoff team to NBA championship contenders. But the team would suffer a major blow when superstar center David Robinson was done for the season due to a foot injury. Greg Popovich, who was already the general manager and vice president of basketball operations, fired head coach Bob Hill and decided to promote himself to the job. The Spurs finished with a 20-62 record, which was one of the worst records in the NBA, but help was on the way. The Spurs were awarded the first pick in the 1997 NBA Draft. With that first pick, they drafted Tim Duncan, a 6'11 center out of Wake Forest. And now with him being paired up with David Robinson, they create a new dynamic duo called the Twin Towers because they were dominant in the middle and in the post. And the Spurs felt now that they had another star with Robinson, the Spurs went from a formidable playoff team to a championship contender. And Duncan turned the Spurs fortunes around instantly in the 1997-98 season where they finished 56-26 before losing in the second round to the Utah Jazz. Duncan also took home Rookie of the Year. The Spurs were anxious to see what strides they could make in the 1998-99 season, but the NBA stopped them before they could take one step. In the middle of 1998, the Players Union and the NBA were having issues and disagreements over a new collective bargaining agreement, which led to the lockout. In January of 1999, the NBA and the Players Union reached a new collective bargaining agreement, but it came at a heavy price. Two-thirds of the NBA season were gone, TV ratings and ticket sales declined, and the 1999 NBA season had been shortened to 50 games. The 1999 NBA season tipped off on February 5th, 1999. The Spurs were ready to get back at it on the court, this time with a little help. They acquired Antonio Daniels, the point guard from the Vancouver Grizzlies, and they signed veteran Steve Kerr and Mario Eli, who had won five championships combined in the last five years. Kerr won three in a row with the Chicago Bulls, while Eli won two in a row with the Houston Rockets. And they also had pretty solid players in small forward Sean Elliott and the little general Avery Johnson, the other point guard. The Spurs got off to a pretty sluggish start the first month of the season as they started out 6-8. and eight. But they regrouped and responded by dominating the rest of the season and finished with a 37-13 and 13 record which gave them the best record in the NBA. They finished first in defensive rating while finishing 11th in offensive rating. They finished third in points allowed while finishing 13th in points scored. And the Spurs didn't slow down once the 1999 NBA playoffs started. In the first round, they knocked off the young Kevin Garnett and the Minnesota Timberwolves in five games. Then in the second round, they swept Shaq, Kobe, and the Lakers. In the Western Conference Finals, the Spurs would dominate and sweep the Portland Trailblazers. But the biggest highlight of that series would be created by the veteran Sean Elliott. Into Sean Elliott. He fires the three and hits it! His sixth of the game! What a shot! That game-winning shot is now dubbed the Memorial Day Miracle. The Spurs advanced to their first ever NBA Finals and they were matched up against the New York Knicks, who wasn't just making postseason magic, they were also making some postseason history. The Knicks entered the playoffs as the number eight seed in the Eastern Conference. No team lower than fourth had advanced to the NBA Finals since the 1995 Houston Rockets when they were the number six seed in the Western Conference. 
The Knicks had a pretty nice team with Patrick Ewing, Larry Johnson, Marcus Camby, Latrell Sprewell, and Allen Houston. In the first round, they defeated their rival, the Miami Heat, in five games. Then they swept the Atlanta Hawks in the second round. And then the Eastern Conference Finals, they defeated their arch rival, the Indiana Pacers, in six games. As soon as the ball tipped up in the air for the 1999 NBA Finals, the Spurs were ready to go as they dominated the first two games at home. And Tim Duncan had a double-double in both games. But the Knicks would bounce back at home and win game three behind Allen Houston's 34 points. But the Spurs responded with a hard-fought game four win behind another double-double from Tim Duncan. And then there was game five. Could the Spurs knock off the Knicks to win their first NBA championship or would the Knicks play for another day? Game five was very close throughout. Both teams went at it for three quarters and it was no different in the fourth quarter. With seconds left in the fourth quarter, the Spurs found themselves down by one when an unlikely hero would step up and make the biggest shot in Spurs history. The Spurs by one. That unlikely hero was the little general, Avery Johnson. He hit a long jumper in the corner with 47 seconds left to give the Spurs the lead. And in the final seconds, the Spurs got a defensive stop by shutting down Latrell Sprewell as he tried to go for a layup. The Spurs captured their first NBA championship 26 years after moving from the ABA to the NBA. They were also the first former ABA team to win an NBA title. David Robinson finally got that elusive ring while Tim Duncan won it in his second year. Tim Duncan was named Finals MVP and rightfully so because he averaged a double-double throughout the series with 27 points and 14 rebounds per game. David Robinson also averaged a double-double in the series with 16 points and 11 rebounds per game. And the veteran Mario Ellie chipped in with 11 points and 4 rebounds per game while going 4 for 13 from 3-point range as he captured his third championship. I think the reason why the 99 Spurs don't get their just due is because it was during a lockout year. As a matter of fact, after they won that championship, most people were calling their title a fluke. But this team's talent was definitely slept on. You had Tim Duncan, David Robinson. You also had Sean Elliott, who was a pretty good forward. You had veteran leadership from Avery Johnson, Steve Kerr, Mario Ellie. Two out of three of them were champions. Greg Popovich, who was also the GM at the time, built a team that he knew he could coach and could win with. Also, he built a team that paved the way for one of the most underrated dynasties in modern sports. And he also changed the way NBA basketball was played. His teams played tough defense while passing the ball. They passed up a good shot for a great shot. Everyone talks about how the Golden State Warriors changed the way basketball was played. Look where Steve Kerr got it from. A lot of people have criticized the Spurs style of play for being too methodical. It's not flashy, it's not sexy, it's not the running gun, but it's won them a lot of games and it's won them four championships within the last 20 years. Well, eight down and two more to go. Tell me, what do you think about the 99 Spurs? Leave it in the comment section below. Till next time, y'all have a good one. Love y'all to life. QC out. And now you can donate to Talking and Grubbing Media via PayPal or Cash App. Your donations will help me keep this channel going and I can continue to produce more quality content. I greatly appreciate your donations. The PayPal link and the Cash App cash tag will be in the comic section below. Hey, what's up good people, it's QC once again. Now that you saw the video, subscribe to the channel. When you do, click on the bell icon so that way you won't miss any new videos from me and be mad. Let your family and friends miss those videos and let them be mad. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram, like me on Facebook. Thanks for watching.